Welcome back guys. So today is another product review. It's another product from MIG. Really starting to like the uh, the stuff coming out from them. So I've tried some of their airbrush paints before which is fantastic and please check out my other video on MIG Concrete. They have a paste that gives a very good texture exactly what you want to use for concrete. But this time around, it's pigment. Now, I haven't had much experience with pigment. I've tried a few different things of weathering. But in this video, I'll show you a couple of tips that you can use with this stuff. So, we'll get right to the hobby desk. So, I can make a hell of a lot of mess. Because this stuff, this powder, will get everywhere if you're not careful. And, uh, <laughs> just a word of advice, don't use it if you've got a cold. Sneezing in this stuff is not advisable. It will go everywhere. Right, oh, let's get to the hobby desk. Okay, so the first thing you may notice about this stuff is it's extremely dry. Like I said, you don't want to sneeze in it. This is not a paint, this is a pigment. So, high quality pigment, especially created for modelers. You can apply the pigment powder directly on the model and also fix it using fixer or enamel thinner. Yes, you can, because this stuff will brush off, especially on a smooth surface. It will come off over a period of time. But don't worry, it does stain the surface, and it won't come off straight away. It's not like you tip the base upside down and it's gone. But yes, fixing this stuff will always maintain what it looked like when you first applied it. Uh, okay, with earth or plaster products to give the volume of a different texture. Okay, yes, you can use it on earth. As earth and on plaster products, it gives it a different texture. So you can use it on rough ground and it will really stay into the rough ground and stain it. Or on a wall, uh, like this is like a plaster wall, and that will give you an, um, a bit more of a texture on there. Because some walls, you know, it would look a bit too perfect, let's say in the battlefield, if it was completely smooth. But this stuff, not only does it colour like paint would, it actually leaves behind a texture. So, like they said, use it on earth or use it on plaster. So I will use it on this base here, which is pretty good. It's not bad, it's okay, but it's a bit boring. So let's crack the lid off and make sure you've got a newspaper or something nearby. So in there, you'll see dust. So I like to use a very old brush. You can see it's quite, quite dry. And not too big because I'm going to get in a few nooks and crannies. So what I like to do is put a little bit on the brush and knock it into the lid. Speaking of knocking, I'll move this away because <laughs> I will knock it over. And like I said, you just step a little bit on the brush. Not a lot. It goes a long, long way, this stuff. And I want to get in all the little nooks and crannies because I want this to be a nice stained base. So that's where it was the thickest, and the more I work it, the thinner it gets. So I could say that that was the original earth, and here you can see it's thinning out, thinning out, thinning out. A bit like I was teasing it with an airbrush, and uh, you can still see it's stained there. So if I was using an airbrush, I would say it's blasted there, and gently ease off into there. It does the same thing. But what a wonderful colour. What a wonderful colour. Now there's lots of different colours you can use. Um, this one specifically was Vietnam Earth. But there's loads of different, there's like Martian kind of Earths, so very, very ready. This is fairly red. I didn't go too crazy and get the Martian one. And then you can get uh, like traditional earthy colours, like your khaki colours. So what I imagine on this particular base is, these are rocks. Obviously rocks do not produce dirt. But, if you wanted quite a Martian looking environment, and you wanted to stain these rocks, you could totally do it. But in this particular base, I am going to make it look like there is earth around here. So you don't really need a lot, like I said, I'm going to get a little bit in there. And this stuff will stain everything. So see a little tuft of grass, I can stain that. I can stain the rocks. Texture like this is fantastic, because it really does give off the earthy look like so. So I'm just going to work it in, nice and rough, hence the old knackered brush. 
do not use your, your favourite brushes, like your Series 7s or anything like that, because it will get destroyed. Not by the powder, but, but obviously rubbing in the base, it's kind of like sandpaper, it will destroy it. So, you can see like the main splodges, that's fine, but I can really work the areas around and tease it out. Because if there was dust and mud around here, it wouldn't just be in one small area, unless someone tipped it out in a jar. You know, it, it's outside, it's going to get blown around. So this is what I'm doing, I'm just teasing it out. And like I said, yes you can fix it, but if I tip it right now, not a lot has come off, and that looks pretty much the same. So yeah, fixing it is fantastic, it is a good idea, but if you don't use the fixer, you know, don't be alarmed, it's not just going to go, it's all gone. But it's not like good old sand and glue or anything like that, PVA glue. You know, it's not permanently fixed. It will eventually come off. But like I'm doing now, it will only wear off like that. It will just fall off. So yeah, just have a bit of fun with it. And this stuff is great for covering up feet of models as well. Uh, I've recently painted some corn berserkers and they've run through wilderness like this and the dust has kicked up around the bottoms of their shins. So this stuff is great for weathering on the bottom of the miniatures. So you can see like this kind of thing here, this guy, he's got a little bit of grubby around here because he's been trampling through dust. So I'm just going to rub off just a little bit not using it straight from there, and if I did do that, I'll just knock off the excess because I don't want it too harsh. I just want the illusion of dust, not like he's standing in a big pile of dust. It's great, you know, you put your chipping down, put this over top, a bit of weathering, just like I said, a little bit goes a long way. Like so. Like that. You could also use it with a super fine brush. I have a tile here, just a mucky old normal tile. And I'll put a little bit of dust on the tile. A little bit of water. So I have a little water pile here. Bring a little bit of dust over here, and I'm just going to gradually add it to the water pile. And now you can see straight away this stuff, it's just like mucky water. And I can put it on a few rivets, I just do a little bit of streaking like that, so you can see that there's mucky water coming off of the rivets. No problem. But obviously the more you use, the thicker it will get. So that's gone from dirty water streaking to if I add a nice clump of that to the water. I'll add a bit more from the bottle. Not too much. And with a thicker brush, because I don't want to ruin my nice thin brush. Can now make real thick mud, and that looks very realistic even when it dries. Brilliant! Look at that, and that can be applied to model bases, and that would look like mud. But also, like I said, you can thin it out and use it and make it look like water streaks, you can make it look like thick mud, or you can apply it to something and make it look like rust. So if you have like a rusted barrel or something like that, applied it, it would look like rust. So I have an old girder here, so just a girder that I'm going to use and a piece of terrain, and I'm going to 
apply some of this. So I'm going to put it on a bit thick and stipple it on because once dry I might even dry brush it a bit of riser rust or something from Games Workshop and that will pick up all the lovely details. So if you put it on thick with all chunky pigments in there it could look like rust. You can even sponge it on. So I'll get a little bit of sponge. Like I said you can just stipple it on like so. That looks a bit more realistic doesn't it? No problem. So this stuff's great for making chips on a miniature. If you've got some Death Guard models and you want them to be really chipped up you can use some of this. Um, you can use the different colour ones, like the Martian one is quite ready, so like a real reddish rust, not a problem. Or you can keep it a little bit thin and use it as mud. Once again, a little bit of rusty water or muddy water off of rivets. But my personal favourite, on a base like so. I think that looks quite nice. So yes, um, Vietnamese earth, it's quite a ready colour, but there's lots and lots of different colours of the pigment from MIG. Thank you very much for watching this small video. Please hit that like button, please subscribe.